Hello and welcome to the induction video for A-Level Maths at Watergraham Sixth Form. My name is Mr Sharp, I'm one of, the no one of a number of A-Level Maths teachers at the Sixth Form. So what we're going to do is we're going to um, go through a number of things that you need to know for um, the A-Level Maths course. So to start off with, okay, um, firstly we teach the Pearson LXL specification and this is the same as the GCSE at Watergrave. Um, the course is assessed through three papers at the end of year 13 and there is no coursework. Two of the papers are pure maths, algebra and trigonometry and calculus, things like that. And the other paper is applied maths and that's things like statistics and mechanics. Mechanics a bit like physics at um, some of the physics at GCSE. Um, the grades range from A star to E and I'll talk a bit more about those in a moment. Um, you will have two teachers for your A-level course. One will mainly teach the pure maths and the other will teach the applied content. Okay, um, you will have four lessons in year 12 and five in year 13. This is the same for all subjects. Um, you should aim to study for about 10 hours a week, including your lessons and set assignments and additional study. This, um, if you think about all three of your A-levels, is equivalent to a full-time job. So that's a good indication for you. So you'll be assessed regularly throughout the course. Um, there will be assessments as MD unit tests and also larger assessments throughout. Um, you'll need textbooks and equipment, and we'll see the details about that on a later slide. Now, whilst at Watergrave, you support from all your maths teachers um, some structured support lesson sessions scheduled for those who find the work challenging so to talk a little bit about the grades um, let's go through this slide here so um, the two charts show the distribution of grades at a level and that's for the whole country and dependent on average GCSE grades so these um, you can see these um, even if you had grades between seven and eight only about just over 20% of the students go on to get an A star, and some of those students even end up with a D or an E. If your GCSE grades are a little lower, you can see that students are just as likely to get a grade C as they are an A in A level. Now, working consistently hard throughout the course and attending a good sixth form is a way to ensure you get the higher grades, but um, it is not as simple as if you've got a 9 at GCSE or an 8 at GCSE, that is going to automatically turn into the highest grade at A level. So let's go forward from that. OK, so five things that you need to do before you start in September. So number one, you need to purchase textbooks. Um, so the textbooks that you need, OK, are the following. You need the Edexcel. Um, LXL books and Pure Maths Year 1, okay, the blue book, and Statistics and Mechanics Year 1, which is that brown book there. Now, there are um, books for, for the second year of the course. Okay, you'll also need a specific calculator, and that's the Casio FX991, and it's called Classes. And this is functions that you're expected to use in exam, so you'll need to learn how to use it. Okay, so let's go back to this. Um, so the other things you need to be able to do, you need to um, make sure you get paper and folders. Okay, so um, get folders to organize your work, several large ones to keep at home, and a smaller one to bring to school each lesson. Buy some paper. It doesn't have to be square paper for most of your work. You will need to complete the summer induction booklet and so that your teachers and you know which topics you need support on as you start the A-level. Finally, it's good to take some time over the summer to read some suitable books and watch some mathematical video videos so you start to think like a mathematician. Um, if you are finding the induction booklet a challenge, there are many resources out there. And um, One is shown here, so a, um, a website which has topics from GCSE which um, will help you bridge the gap between GCSE and A-level. During the course, apart from regularly attending your lessons and completing all the work set, there are three things that will help you do well. Firstly, there have been a number of students in your class who have study periods at the same time as you. Um, there are also many other students in year 12 and year 13 studying maths 
And so what I make sure you do is you kind of pair up with other students and work with those students during your study period rather than just work on your own. Um, secondly, enjoy the, um, the subject more by engaging material beyond the curriculum. For example, you can read a range of mathematical books, you can listen to podcasts and watch YouTube videos and other, um, you know, other channels. And this will really help when it comes to the stage where you're applying for university. And I'll just talk through some of those books and videos now. Okay, so books wise, there's loads of books out there, but what I'm talking about are books that are broader about maths. So not, not studying for the actual course, but um, things that may be of interest. So again, this will give a real advantage when applying for university courses. There's many books available on pure maths topics, for example, prime numbers or famous equations. But um, I'm reading Factfulness by Hans Roslin at the moment, which is um, really good for those who've got interest in statistics. Okay, so videos wise, um, there's lots of YouTube channels. So there's just three here that might be really sort of interest to you. So one's called Three Blue, One Brown, um, Math Ollinger, and Number File. Some really interesting. There. Okay. So moving on now, what I'm going to do is suggest seven habits that you, will help you succeed at A-level maths. So number one, um, being outstanding at something is achieved by being good all the time, not by having fluctuating standards. You will achieve great results if you are consistent throughout the course. Um, communication is vital. If you're finding something difficult to understand, talk to your teacher straight away. So don't just leave it. Following on from that, um, it's really important to be proactive with your study. Okay, if something's not right, do something about it. Um, ask questions, talk to other students, look for examples online, you know, and work with your teachers. Okay, life will be a lot easier if you're organized with your work. Keep your notes and work tidy and in folders and sorted by topic. Take time to evaluate and reflect on your learning after each lesson. What did you find hard? What did you find easy? What do you need to do now? Have high standards with your work. Be rigorous with how you present work. Don't think it doesn't matter until the exam. What you want to do is you want to practice the way you want to be. Most importantly, you need to be resilient. This means sticking with things when they are a challenge and not giving up. Even if you found GCSE maths really straightforward, there are times when the A-level is tough. Enjoy that challenge. To finish off, we are really looking forward to seeing you in September. We have a great team of maths teachers, a large number of students do A-level maths. If you work consistently well over the two years, you will learn maths that will be really useful to you in many areas of study and have a great A-level that will open doors to you in the future. So thanks very much for listening and we're looking forward to seeing you.